Welcome to the shooting show. This week it's a wild boar shooting bonanza. Nick and Byron are in France looking for a big Kyler and they get more than they bargained for. Plus we interview Richard Alley, the new chief executive at BASC. Nick Latus is a man with a mission. He's behind the rifle as the shooting show resumes its European bar hunt, this time in France. First, he has to zero his rifle and Schwarzky scope. It's a 7mm rem mag, so there's plenty of power where it's needed, and soon Nick has the job done. How's that looking, Nick? I don't think we're Billy really Malloway. No. Hunt guide Soren Rasmussen seems happy enough with Nick's shooting abilities. Good. Yeah, the last two. Yeah, perfect. That's it. Happy enough for that, Nick? That's Sorry. perfect. There is no time to rest after the flight over, and Nick is soon heading towards the high seat ready for the evening. A full moon is expected and conditions are ideal for bar, but Nick isn't just after any bar. We're now in uh, the end of April and uh, some of the sows will be, they'll be pregnant. So uh, some will have young already that won't be big enough to follow us. So you really got to be careful in your selection. Basically, if we can see, if we see, if we see a Kyla, uh, we can shoot those or shoot, uh, shoot the followers. That's with it with the sow. Nick is settled in and ready for the waiting game, but the game doesn't last long as some pigs show themselves after a few minutes. They're only small and Nick looks on and considers his options. The smallest one of them, isn't it? As well as hoping to take a Kyler on this trip, Nick is taking care of some population control, so some small pigs are also on the cards. He's been watching this group long enough and selects a pig suitable for culling. You all right? Did you get that? First French ball. It's dead. Nick, you've not been out long and already you know, to bag your first French pig. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, we uh, we got dropped off at uh, one of the uh, twenty high seats that's on the land, and uh, got ourselves ready in within quarter of an hour. Uh, so came out with three young pigs, and uh, we managed to shoot the smaller one of the three. Let's just hope the rest of the nights follow a similar suit. Well, we hope so, Baron. The wait resumes, and it isn't long before the boar are back out in the ever-increasing numbers. Now the biggest problem is deciding what to do. Wait for a big pig, or take yet another yearling. With no sign of a big Kyler, Nick makes a decision and fits to the rifle once again. There was... Uh... Females, the, the, the larger ones. Uh, we, we stood it for uh, perhaps five, five, six minutes, maybe longer. And, uh, I couldn't be certain there was, a, there, was a, there was a male, there was a rubble male, but I just couldn't make anything out of him. He had the he had the rough hair on the back of his head. I wasn't sure, so if in doubt, then don't don't, don't shoot. But are certainly no shortage here. After half an hour, a number of colourable pigs are once again in attendance. Nick sees the chance to get another one in the bag. Definitely all female. 
Nick selects a suitable beast. As the shot goes off, the pig drops and gets back on its feet. Nick is ready for the backup shot, but thankfully it's not needed. I've never seen so many wild boar in one hunting area. Doesn't. There doesn't, I think. There's more coming up at the back now. I can see another three coming over. Do you think we should take one of these small ones? I think we should just wait for now. See if the pig can't be. Yeah, they, they don't know the way here. I'll have to take one Kyla, so I don't want to make a mistake. The light is fading fast so we switch the camera to night mode to get a better idea of what's going on. There are pigs everywhere but despite the huge numbers there's no sign of the Kyla Nick is desperate to get. Unbelievable Myron. Absolutely not half lost count how many we've seen today. We've only been sat here. It's well over 40. It's some big, big pregnant sound. I've seen two males. One a young male. Uh, definitely I don't want to show one of those. So I'll just <coughs> buy it over time. Struggling with the weather a bit tonight. Yeah, but I'm afraid no moon. We are losing light fast. However, all's not lost for Nick, as another location may prove more fruitful. I saw six Kyla up there, but I was in a bad wind. They were out and then gone again. It could very well have been a Kyla we saw crossing here. Yes. Yeah, there was one, but there was definitely one down there, but I lost the light with the scope, I couldn't see anything. As the moon comes up, Nick and Soren discuss Plan B. So. You walk up to that, you have a field on the left hand side, you pass the garage or whatever you call it. Certainly there are pigs out there now on, 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 on this field. Okay. Uh, and there should be, definitely should be a big one there. There is certainly plenty of activity at the next seat, but conditions are poorer than predicted despite a tricky but careful approach to the high seat. Check the size of them. Thick cloud cover makes getting a clear shot all but impossible. It's all the more agonising to hear Byron describe the specimens he can see with the camera's night mode. I'm afraid I've encountered uh, thick cloud cover. So we've had no, very, very little natural, natural light. Although we're using quality Swarovski optics, we're still, you know, we haven't come here to take risks. So we came close a couple of times, but the deer seem to be. Uh, spooking them when they yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, we've had a red stag that was only 20 yards in front of the seat. Yeah, uh, and a hind has just come up now and spoke the deer every time, so, you know, it's, it's been one of them evenings, I'm afraid. Nick might be frustrated, but three bar from one seat isn't bad, and the sheer numbers of bar augur well for the next night shooting. Day two rolls around, and before the evening's hunt begins, there's time to sample the surrounding area. Hunt guide becomes tour guide as Soren takes Nick up an old driven hunt trail for one of the best views of the Languedoc region. The view's fantastic. And the hills, what are these hills? These are the governments, this is the state. Land. Right. That's where they, it's just forest, forest, forest. This is a forest with, that is very close to the Mediterranean Sea. We are 35 to 4 kilometers away, and so we are in the very sunny Mediterranean region here. And the forest is a, um, a evergreen forest of green oak, giving a lot of food for wild boar, and that's why we have a, a very large population of wild boar. Uh, how many boar do you? think that you have on your area? Obviously it's very difficult to work out exactly, yes. but... I would suppose between four and five hundred. The day soon passes and Nick is back out, taking up a new position. He's filled his quota of smaller pigs and is just out for the Kyla tonight.
Last night we, we saw a colossal amount of uh, wild boar, uh, but only one Kyla, which unfortunately uh, we didn't get managed to get a shot at. So we've come to a different hunting area. Things are looking good. It's raining a little bit, but uh, that definitely won't put the, put the bar off. It's not long before the stars of the show make their appearance. One male and two females. Yeah. But not the big one. No, they're not big. No, we'll, we'll, we'll wait longer. Definitely we could take one of these while <coughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean I could shoot uh, any of the three. I know that you're 45, 50, 50 metres away. But we're going to sit it out longer. Wait for Granddaddy to come. Soon Nick decides he's waited long enough and strikes out on foot to a neighbouring high seat. We're going to move to a different seat. We've got the wind has changed around and it's pushing straight into the into the field in front of us. So we're going to head off to a different a different seat. And, uh, hopefully um, the wind will be in our favour. I think we're good there. We're going to waste the last hour and a bit of daylight. Uh, the three pigs that came out just for no one who had reason spooked. And, uh, I've got to put it down to the wind. Nick stalks in carefully, aware he could come across Bar at any moment, but he reaches the high seat without incident. Number 13 proves lucky on this occasion. It's a matter of moments before Nick spots Bar. Pigs just came out. Uh, all your ones. And Nick looks on as pig after pig comes into sight, but none is the Kyler in question, so he has to hold back his trigger finger. Darkness falls and still we have nothing to show. Getting ever more frustrated, Nick is forced to climb down and rendezvous with Soren one more time. Perhaps we've seen maybe 30 bar. There was just down here, uh, 11 for yeah. one and a half hours. Yes. We never shot one of them. We just left him and left him and left him. Nothing, no, no Kyla. Yeah. As a last ditch attempt, Nick tries yet another seat. There is very little light, so the camera is in IR mode again. But Nick can just see enough through the quality optic to make out a shot. There is a Kyla out feeding and he looks to be good. This is Nick's chance. We decided we'd uh, move quietly off under the uh, what bit of moonlight what we have and, uh, and move to another high seat where we had seen uh, Kyla's the night before. We made uh, you know a bit of uh, noise getting into the seat, it was quite as what we could but you know, we got there and waited and within 20 minutes they started to come back out and uh, we managed to shoot one. <laughs> Good. Excellent. The most uh, uh, exciting hunt is by hunting at full moon. Mm -hmm. So you really, you, you know, the, the wild boar, the, the forest literally became, became alive, at, uh, become alive at night. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, animals coming out at, at night time and um, also, so when you have the moon, you, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very interesting to hunt at full moon. What tips do you have for people wanting to shoot wild boar from high seas? You've obviously done a lot of it yourself, so there must be yes. a few things you've got to watch out and be careful for. Yeah, well, slow movements. So they, are, they look well and uh, they, they hear what, what is going on. And uh, so any movement you make, do it slowly, really slow motion. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the key thing. Nick Latus filling his boots with bar there, and now the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. 
New guidance has relaxed the policing of firearms certificates, prompting praise from shooting organisations. The Association of Chief Police Officers has told police forces to remove unnecessary conditions from licences, instead recommending the simpler, any other lawful quarry condition. Basque's Mike Evely said the ACPO guidance was a common sense and helpful move that would see the end of unnecessary, bureaucratic and unenforceable conditions. The Deer Initiative has created a free app for iPhone and Android to help monitor deer-related road traffic accidents. The Deer Collisions app, called Oh Deer, aims to catalogue the estimated 42,000 road accidents each year involving deer. Using the app will transmit GPS data, allowing deer wardens to find you and dispatch injured deer more quickly. Follow the link on screen for more information. Up to one in three UK wildlife species have halved in number in the past 50 years. That's the story of the latest large-scale wildlife survey. The State of Nature report cites intensive farming methods as a possible cause of decline, with a loss of meadows, hedgerows, ponds and small waterways affecting species across the food chain. The report did also reveal that 20% of species have increased in number and that targeted conservation methods can have an effect. More in the next issue of Modern Gamekeeping. And finally, British Shooting has said it will establish an awareness programme to raise the profile of shooting in the UK and abroad. As part of its new strategy for the next two Olympic cycles, the lottery-backed governing body said it wanted to raise awareness of the qualities and values of shooting. It also said it would be giving more clarity and direction to promising shooters, and it was committed to individualised support programmes for athletes in the build-up to the Rio Olympics. And now, in a shooting show news special, Wes Stanton interviews the new Basque Chief Executive, Richard Alley. Okay, uh, so Richard, um, Basque was founded in 1908. In that time it's had four chief executives. One of them has only been in uh, the post for two months, which is you. So what's your plans for BASC in your tenure over the next 25, 30 years? Well, I should say I'm on a five-year contract, uh, which was a deliberate change for Basque Council to make sure that from day one my feet are held to the fire. Um, I'd be absolutely delighted if I was here in the next... 30 years, um, but over the course of my next five years, it's really all about delivering for Basque's membership. We're a membership organisation, we are still growing, so we're now over 130,000 members, and I think that places us in a really strong position, both to provide all members with more services, but importantly, say to politicians and regulators, shooting is important and is important to the rest of the country too. Since you've been in the uh, Chief Executive's Chair at BASC, what, what, uh, what's been the best thing about uh, the new job and um, what do you think uh, in the first two months you've observed are the biggest threats to the future of our sport? Um, the best thing, that's really easy, it's the people. Um, Coming into, um, into Basque, and it's a long time since I, uh, since I shot, some 20 years I guess, um, shooting is very much a family. Um, I've met members up and down the country from, from Scotland to Northern Ireland to uh, the southeast of England uh, and in down to the southwest, um, and the people are the greatest thing. It really is a family. It's like, um, it's like knocking on somebody's door being invited in, um, share a beer and, 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 a, and a nice pheasant breast, um, and away you go. Um, the biggest threat, the biggest threat actually, is if shooting doesn't promote itself. Shooting must promote itself. All too often I think people can say, oh we need to defend shooting. Actually, we need to promote ourselves. We have nothing to apologise for. Shooting's great. Shooting provides economic benefits up and down the country. Shooting provides environmental benefits up and down the countryside. And of course, shooting is part of the UK's social fabric. Um, it's part of life. Nothing to apologise for. BASC endured a substantial number of brickbats over lead shot. And there was a view at the time that BASC didn't work hard enough to prevent the banning of lead shot for use on the foreshore uh, for wildfowlers. And indeed, we now have this crazy situation 
where you have to use non-lead on the foreshore in Scotland but are permitted to use lead inland but in England and Wales the ban is species specific. Um, what would you say uh, we need to do to secure the future of lead if, in, if indeed you think it has a future? I think the first thing is to look forward. Um, if we continue to look towards the past we end up navel gazing while the rest of the world moves on um, <laughs> without us. Um, I think the first thing is, whatever the law is, whether we agree with the law or not, we must follow the law. If we don't, politicians and regulators are all too inclined to introduce yet more onerous conditions just so they can achieve compliance. It's a numbers game for them. Looking forward and looking to where we are at the moment, my message is really quite straightforward. No sound evidence, no change. That's Basque's policy, and under my tenure, that will continue to be Basque's policy. I think the lead ammunition group, the processes that they have in place, are exactly the right processes. It is up to the LAG and the government machinery around the LAG to make sure that all participants follow and adhere to a scientific, evidence-based approach. The biggest threat to game rearing and release isn't actually from within the UK, but from Brussels. How will you address Europe? Um, I think there's three levels. The first one is to make sure all Commission officials understand the positive benefits that shooting provides. And we work through our European Association, FACE, who are the experts on dealing with the Commission on that. The second one is, more, more for us, is to make sure that all UK MEPs understand how important shooting is. And the third one, of course, is the Council of Ministers. So in our case, that's the UK Government. And that's about continuing to make sure that MPs and the UK Government understand the importance of shooting. So it's a three-pronged attack, but it's really all about making sure people are informed. There's been a driving test in place in this country since the 1930s and compulsory testing for uh, shotgun certificates and firearm certificates is a matter of uh, practicality for the Germans with their Jagdschein system. Do you think compulsory testing for shotgun certificates and firearm certificates is a good idea? No, I don't. I think if we, if we go down that route, it is nothing but overzealous administration. And the UK has a proud history of, of taking a far more responsible approach to shotgun and firearm licensing and actually placing its trust in its citizens. And I think we should carry on with that approach. So if uh, Stanley Duncan were sitting in your chair today, what do you think he'd make of uh, his WAGB, which has now become BASC? Well, I think he'd be absolutely delighted that we have 130,000 plus members. I also think he would be delighted that so many people enjoy his sport, enjoy the sport of shooting. And I think it's that, that, that shooting is really a enjoyable family that he'd be most impressed with. Um, he would probably wish we were based in Hull though. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We're out every Monday, 7.30 p.m. UK time. This is The Shooting Show.